Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Hi everyone, we are going to start again and we are talking about the consumption and leisure model and in this particular model we are talking about, we talked in two sessions about the basic foundations of macroeconomic foundations of mac. So we talked about the microeconomic foundations of macroeconomics and now we are trying to see, we already have defined the representative consumer, representative agent, different characteristics, we characterize the representative consumer. We also defined the budget constraint, we also had the consumer uh, optimization, the optimal level of consumption and leisure. Now we will be looking from the labor supply side that how the labor supply function of the representative consumers looks like. And in the last session we also talked about, so the reference book, uh, the references remain same even for this session, so you have to go through. Uh, you can choose any of these books and go through, but I would recommend that you should read Stephen D. Williamson. This is going to be the major reference for the this lecture. So here, what we are talking about is the, so we had seen about this particular part that what happens when we have the, the increase in wage rate, then we saw that the increase in wage rate has a direct impact on the consumption, but leisure it is not very certain that whether it will rise or fall. So those things. Now we are talking about the labor supply. So when we say that labor supply, so labor supply shows about the supply of labor that representative, representative agent supplies at the given wage rate which means that the, the wage rate is decided by the the factor market are also decided by the major productivity of labor. So, the if the major productivity of labor is higher, the wage rate is expected to go up because there will be a lot of demand for the labor, but if it is lower then the wage rate comes down. So, that, that framework will be applying. So, when we set up the microeconomic model, so you have to keep in mind that when you are defining your agent. In our setup, it may look very simple and straightforward, but in real life, if you work with your own model, when you try to work out, then you find that when you are defining representative agent or representative consumer or the consumer, then, then you have to think about the modeling framework, the basic model that you are assuming that whether this particular guy is going to have the Cobb Douglas based kind of utility function or any kind of CRRA kind of utility function. So, those uh, things you have to keep in mind. When you are having interaction with the, uh, uh, with, uh, between the consumer and the uh, firm, then you have to bring in the labor supply idea into account. So, here you have to labor supply specific. So, here you have the labor supply. So, NS that we have assumed, it is having the real wage rate and it is again the number of hours available minus the leisure component that we have. It is also linked to the wage rate. If it is higher, it is expected that leisure component. So, here it is. Now, here we have the labor supply. So, here it, the, the, this is looking like and this will have upward slope because as the real wage will increase, the employment will increase because it is expected that it should have. But after some certain point of time, it will also have the backward bending kind of scenario. And backward bend, bending typically happens when you have the income and substitution effects playing very important role. So, when I mention about the real wage and the employment, so it, this goes in this way, right. Now, in what all scenarios, if you think about the comparative statics that we are talking about, in what scenarios this moves leftward. So, labor supply what are the components that can affect the labor supply is that there should not be sudden increase in income of the representative consumer. 
there should not be tax decline. If government is saying that because of some reasons we will not be charging you tax, it means that this amount of extra money the consumer is going to have. So, this will also inter have the interfering effect on the labor supply. So, those dimensions we have to take into account. So, here we have the real wage and here we have the employment. So, when you have the increase in profit or the dividend or decrease in taxes, then you have the leftward shift and rightward shift when it is just working against. So, those things we have to keep in mind. Now, here we have the H minus LW which means the total number of hours worked. So, as I told that this may look uh, may be looking like a very straightforward case that it is having positive trend and same way that we have in economics the supply uh, curve supply line that we always mention the upward sloping. But after certain point of time as I as mentioned that you may have the backward bedding. So, this may turn this word this may go like this. So, if you have a that kind of situation in which all conditions it arises. So, here it is. So, the labor supply curve is backward bending because at high wage rate high wage levels the amounts of hours work declines. So, in many of the countries you have the situations where the number of working days in a week is, is getting down. Uh, it is getting lowered and now you have to work only for 4, four days, 5 days. So, those aspects you can link it here. Now, when wage is low, the substitution effect outweighs the income effect, right? The, this is also once you have the, the substitution effect in the sense, we saw it here, right? There was also the decrease in your leisure. Now, if it is leading to decrease in leisure, then this is also having a some kind of impact on your consumption pattern also. So, this is how it mentions about. So, labor supply will have always the, the trending scenario because the wage rate this particular guy is going to work. At very high level of nominal after tax wage, the income effect ought to outweigh the substitution effect and as a result the supply curve will show the negative which means that it will start bending back. Now, at the intermediate level of the, the in, at the intermediate levels, the nominal tax wage, the substitution effect roughly cancel out the income effect, which means that there will be a, some kind of, of mitigation here, giving the labor supply curve its vertical origin. So, here it goes like this. So, it will have such type of trend. So, it will start like this, it will go straight and then it will turn like this. So, that kind of I am talking about this shape that how it, it is looking like from here it is the lower wage, from here it is constant and from here it is a downward sloping. So, here it, it becomes the same way which means that the if income effect is reinforcing on substitution effect is more or less clear that both are moving the same direction, but when you have difference then there you have the role of all these that what is the wage rate at that level that will decide about the manager. So, the income effect is reinforcing that we can see here that when you have at very high level, you have the income effect outweighing which means that this particular guy would like to spend some more time thinking about. So, more of leisure, less of work. At this level, when substitution effect is cancelling out i, then it means that both are on the same path. Uh, and then here we have the substitution effect outweigh, which means that this particular guy would like to substitute more of a more of consumption over leisure. So he would be working here. Now, so this was from the representative consumer side. So sometimes we define the representative consumer as a consumer, and we superimpose the idea of consumption, consumer behavior. I would say. So, yeah, for this particular part you can refer any textbook in micro that will be sufficient for you to understand these very rudimentary ideas on or rudimentary techniques to understand the production labor supply then the consumption. So, I think even the whole ovarian intermediate uh, uh, will be more than inter intermediate microeconomics will be more than sufficient. Now, the production function. Once I go for production function, then the ultimate objective of a firm is that it has the profit maximization objective. What is that objective? So, when I say that we have profit maximizations and then it talks about y is equal to z 
f k n and z is nothing but this talks about the this is the constant term but this talks about the level of productivity that how this particular function particular these two factors at what rate it is going to contribute to output so this is the important factor model now you must be knowing that if you have done the basic economics then you must be knowing that a constant turn to a scale when you have the increase in input and this increase in input is also leading at whatever rate these inputs are increased it is also transforming or leading to increase by the same rate of output so that is also so it talks about the homogeneous function that we have that if you in, in superimpose any lambda parameter to any function so if you just just take out that lambda so lambda decides the magnitude or degree of the uh, the or the scale of increment in the function so that we talk about the output increases with increase in either the labor input or capital input so this is the the normal production function we have the marginal product of labor decreases as the labor in input increases so it is the very uh, common thing that when we have the so marginal product is nothing but additional increase in output due to increase in one unit of labor that we say so whatever additional output that you have in, in, in that you are seeing due to increase in the uh, the increment of one labor so if you are continuously increasing the labor so in the beginning when you have added 1 to 2 then it it helped you to augment the output but when you go for continuously adding then after some time the the change in output will decline so you will not have the same growth so maybe earlier you hired only one person this one person you added one more so earlier this person was producing four so now you started producing eight after third labor you again you hired one more then they started producing 12 but again you hired one more then it may not be leading to 16 it may be maybe coming to 15 or uh, 13 so that is the case that sometime if you go for continuous increasing then that becomes a burden in case of india the typical exercise that we always say in the case of agriculture sector that you have more labor and this leads to a problem and productivity of the agriculture sector is always questioned for that reason now marginal product of capital decreases as the capital in input increases when I say marginal product of capital decreases as the capital input increases in the sense that if you are having one machine and you are producing some output you go on adding in the same way that I mentioned about the labor it will also have the similar reactions marginal product of labor increases as the quantity of capital increases this is a good exercise that earlier you are having you were using much machinery in a very less amount more of labor so labor used to take more time to produce one output the moment you increase capital you bring machinery so you have cert certain level of automation at the very basic level so this labor finds it very useful and then this augments the production process so so better technology better uh, i would say uh, production system increases the efficiency or enhances the efficiency in the production process and uh, one labor earlier he used to produce only 10 but because of machinery he is producing 500 output so that is the underlying idea so if you have better machinery better, better tools then this helps the, um, the marginal product of labor to increase now here we have the we define the profit function which is pi it is nothing but zfk nd which is the demand for labor minus wnd so this is the amount of uh, income or the, the, this is the labor share so this is the amount that the labor is receiving this is the productivity factor and this is the demand for labor and this is the capital that this particular guy is having this representative agent is having and here wnd is the total cost of the labor input when the form maximizes profits marginal product of labor equals wage rate and this is what it tells about so the moment you have the scenario so maybe here it can be looked at at point a that how it is moving and here also you can think about so this is the marginal product of labor the moment you have the scenarios where you have the the marginal product of labor is equal to real wage so here you have the mpn is equal to w and this mpn is having a lot of 
meaning here and this is how it looks like. So, this is the production process, this is the, the here, here you have the labor demand on top of this whatever line you superimpose so at point A this particular representative agent will be just thinking about how much cost it incurs and how much labor he has to ask for so, this will be the labor uh, input or labor demand coming from the firm. So, this is what we try to cover in this. Now, once I have defined this particular part, so what is critical in the case of representative form that he has the well defined production function, he has the profit making objectives. So, profit making objectives objectives are here pi is equal to z f k n d minus w n d and this pi is, is taking into account both the production side of the firm and also the representative consumer side because this is going to the representative consumer because we have mentioned w n s. So, in case of firm from the representative consumer side this is the labor supply from firm side this is the labor demand. So, this we are mentioning here w n d. So, here it is looking like the same. Now, the we will be working with the macro setup. So, micro foundations of macroeconomics that I mentioned about. Now, we will be trying to include these two agents in the microeconomic setups and try to drive the macroeconomic inference. So, this is the ultimate objective of this course that we are trying to understand apart from IS and LM framework that we always follow and, and certain production system or the, the economic growth theories that we have to understand the macro setup. Now, a closed economy setup with only three agents in the economy. So, here we have the representative consumer, representative government, representative firm and the government. Now, government we have not defined, but government we can easily assume that this particular government, what is the role of this government? That this government collects tax T from the representative agent and then this representative agent uh, is paying the tax to the government and government using this. Uh, this and taking as a lump sum tax. So, some amount of consumption goods is being taken by the government and this government will further uh, will, will further be using for expenditure and those things. So, we are talking about the consumption and the government. So, government is whatever amount that the government is collecting from the representative consumer, it is also using for expenditure. So, here we have y is equal to c plus g that we have mentioned. So, c is the consumption and g is the government expenditure. So, here y that we are mentioning it is nothing but z f k n. So, here it is z f k n is equal to c plus g that we are mentioning. So, here you have to think from the point of view of closed economy that how closed economy functions. So, closed economy setup we have that we are not at all interested right now in trying to add the I component which is the investment. We are more interested in understanding Y is equal to C plus G and this is how it looks like. So, here we are talking about the distribution and welfare. So, once I have the role of the government, so government role we have not defined. So, role of the government would be that it will make sure that since the representative firm is hiring the representative consumer. So, we have to make sure that whatever equilibrium that we achieve with the help of both representative consumer and the, the firm, whether the competitive equilibrium that we have achieved, whether it is appropriate or not, can we also measure the efficiency, whether, the, whether this is efficient or not. For that purpose, we will be also trying to introduce the concepts like uh, welfare economics concept, distribution concept. We introduce the concept of economic efficiency which is also directly linked with the Pareto optimality. So, Pareto optimality condition will be used. So, what happens when there is increase in government spending or total productivity? Can we measure the impact of tax distortion on wage income? What should be the size of the government? So, this is what we are also trying to mention. So, whatever we have assumed so far, how it is going to be used, we will be seeing that. So, what will the modeling setup? representative consumer, representative form and the competitive equilibrium and how does the model reacts and what are the effects of change in government spending on total factor productivity. So, those things we will be mentioning about and then also we will be trying to see that when we are saying that there is a tax imposed by the government. So, how g is equal to t is looking like. 
so labor market clear so labor market clearing condition will be seeing at those things so we have now assumed that y is equal to c plus g where y is equal to z f k n and and here we are saying about the close economy so y is equal to c plus g so income expenditure identity that we have so we we now start substituting it so we are now defining that this c represents the overall budget constraint or the consumption pattern of the economy so we, how many consumers are there so suppose 50000 consumers are there in the economy so c represents the budget constraint of the all the representative consumers that we have assumed so this could be c is equal to wn plus pi minus t and this we have assumed in the you can pick it up when we had defined the representative consumer so c is equal to wn plus pi minus t so this is coming from here we had assumed yes here so here we had assumed right so here we had c is equal to wn plus pi minus t so this is how the budget constraint is so here we are talking about the same part so here c is equal to wn plus pi minus t now if you just superimpose a substitute equation 2 to 6 into 7 then here it, it, it looks like this so c is equal to wn plus y right so here we are we are saying about the pi and pi we assumed here that pi profit function of this so we'll be including same here so here and then t the tax that this representative consumer is paying it is nothing but it is equivalent to g because government is not saving anything whatever it gets from the representative consumer it uses for expenditure so that we are putting it here so imposing the conditions of equilibrium when nd is equal to n and t so here when you are just trying to so at the equilibrium when we are mentioning about equilibrium so here we have labor market clear so demand for labor and supply for labor will be getting cleared here so plus minus here you have plus here minus so this gets cancelled so once we have cancelling of these two so what we are getting is nothing but c is equal to y minus g which can be written as y is equal to c plus g so i think this simple exposition that i had shown you uh, I, I just discussed this gives you a lot of idea about the macroeconomic picture so i hope from this slide it is clear that how are we trying to understand the macroeconomic picture with the foundations of microeconomics so here once we have y is equal to c plus g so we are able to arrive at the close economy model what we did in this we assumed two representative agents one was the consumer and another was the firm and these two representative agents when we incorporated it here so this pi that representative consumer had a dividend we included as the production function and then we at equilibrium we know that when labor market clears demand supply will be equal so here we are just cancelling both so here we have to it was ns it is nd so this clears and finally we are having c is equal to y minus g and y is equal to c plus g now this particular line this these these charts are important and these charts are important for three reasons one is that it helps you understand that there are some new dimensions in the economy that we should be understanding second thing is that now the consumption there will be explicit relationship between consumption and leisure that we have seen in case of consumer but now the form idea is also superimposed here so those superimpositions are playing very important role so here we have so here is the production function that we have so this is the output that this economy is having so this is the production function given the labor input this is the output that this production function is uh, this output is producing now here we have the leisure so output as a function of leisure when we are mentioning then this is how it looks like and both have the same slope like a marginal productivity labor but here it is downward sloping so here it is minus right now think about here so here what is that minus g why we are assuming minus g because some amount of consumption has gone as a tax so government is taking away some amount of consumption so now you are you are starting from zero zero here this particular amount has gone as a tax so we are now more bothered about from d to b so this is the 
the leisure L that you have. Now, given the scenario from D to B, this will be the area where this economy will be producing. So, this is represented by production possibility frontier. So, y minus g, this g is subtracted, that is why it is in y minus g. So, this line that you have, this line is nothing but this shows about the production possibility that how much the economy with the help of these uh, agents in the economy with the help of representative consumer can produce and how much form can utilize these two. So, these things are important to note that how are we going to, so this talks about the production capacity of production possibilities. So, production possibility the slope of this is nothing but marginal rate of transformation that we mentioned that how much uh, there is a possibility of transforming one com, uh, one uh, output or input into another. So, that we mention about here. So, production possibilities is the marginal rate of service. So, how much you can convert labor into consumption, leisure into consumption and how much you have the transformation possibility of converting consumption into leisure. So, this is what it talks about because these two are the goods that we are examining. We have also mentioned from the consumer side. So, the competitive equilibrium is the point where we, we try to see that there you have the equilibrium from all three sides. So, marginal rate of substitution, le leisure and consumption is equal to marginal rate of transformation that you have leisure and consumption is equal to marginal product of labor. The moment I say marginal product of labor, then this is speaks about. So, marginal product of labor is coming from the form side. This is the marginal rate of transformation, which is coming from the production side that how much is the possibility that the representative agent will be deciding about and how much the economy is having ability to convert the consumption into leisure. Marginal rate of substitution a leisure for consumption is, is this point. So, J is this. So, production possibility frontier is this, this is the competitive equilibrium. So, here we have, so A, D, H, this is the, the condition that we always mention about. This is the J side and this is the C. So, at this level, this is the consumption and this is the leisure that, that we have in this competitive equilibrium setup and the J point also shows about the competitive equilibrium. So, at this point all these three are equivalent. So, this is how we try to arrive it here. I will be stopping it here and in, in the next class we will be talking about the and in the next session we will be talking about the inference. But for you the most critical part should be to understand this that when we assume the closed economy y is equal to c plus g when we introduce the representative consumer whatever we had assumed and then we have now introduced the, the production which means the, the form the representative form with these two playing a role how are we deducting it and driving the closed economy setup y is equal to c plus d. Rest of the things are the static phenomena. So, I will be taking up further from here and I will be mentioning it again these cases and then we will be going to the role of social planner and further. I will be stopping it here. Thank you. Thank you so much for your attention.